So in this video, we're going to do several examples of sorting algorithms where we'll just see how the algorithms work. Now, the code may not line up 100% with what's going on here because it's very easy for us to look at a, an array and say which one is smallest, whereas in the, in the code, we'll actually have to manually go through the array or do some things to figure out which element is, is smallest and so forth. However, you should get a nice overview of, of what the sorting algorithms are trying to achieve. So the first three sorting algorithms we're going to see are called simple sorts. They're not the most efficient we have. However, their implementation tends to be pretty straightforward and thinking through how they work is a little simpler than some of the more efficient ones we'll see later. So selection sort sorts an array by finding the smallest element, putting that at the first spot, then the next smallest, the next smallest, and so on. Now, the algorithms will all work in our code inside the same array for the most part, where they'll swap two elements in the array. For this demonstration, though, I'll, I'll move them to where their final place is. So our first pass in selection sort, four is the smallest we've seen so far, but three is smaller, so now three is the smallest. Six is not smaller than three, but two is, so two is the smallest. Now one, one is the smallest. Seven and five are both larger than one, so one is still the smallest. So we're gonna take one and put it in the first spot. Then the next smallest is gonna be two, four, three, six, two, seven, five. Then in our next pass, three will be the smallest, then four, then five, then six, then seven. Insertion sort works by taking each element as you see it and then putting it in a sorted subarray. So our first element is four. Trivially, we just have one element, so it's sorted. Now we have three. Now three is smaller than four, so we're gonna move three in front of four. Then we have six. Six is larger than four, so it's in the right place. Now two. With two, two is smaller than six, it's smaller than four, and it's smaller than three, so we're gonna put two at the front. Then our next element is one. One is smaller than six, smaller than four, smaller than three, smaller than two, so we put one at the front. Our next element is seven. Seven is bigger than six, so it's good. And then we have five. Five is smaller than seven, smaller than six, and then we put five where it belongs. And you'll notice, as we move through the array, we've sorted all the elements that we've seen up until that point. That's different from selection sort, which selection sort also keeps a sorted array, but those are the smallest elements in the array. With insertion sort, we sort them as we see them. So with bubble sort, we look at each pair of elements, and if they're in out of order, we swap them. So three and four are out of order, four and six are in order, Six and two are out of order. Six and one are out of order. Six and seven are in order. And seven and five are out of order. So we swap them. Now notice, now that we've gone one pass, we have the small, the largest element at the beginning. So then we keep repeating that until we've sorted the entire array. Three and four are in order. Four and two are out of order. One and four are out of order. Four and six are in order. Now five and six we're out of order, we swap them, and now they're in order. So now these last two elements are in the correct place. On the next pass, two and three are out of order, one and three are out of order, four, five, six, seven are all in order. With our next pass, two and one are out of order, three, four, five, six, seven, everything else is in order. And actually we can be a little more efficient because we can keep track of how many runs we've, we've made, and we know that after n runs, n items are in sorted order. So for example, after the fourth run, these are all going to be in the correct order. So we really only need to focus on these three elements. So now that we've seen some simple sorts, we're going to look at some efficient sorting algorithms. And the way they work is different. However, the concept is the same. Try to split the array so that you don't have to compare every element in the array with every other element in the array. And that allows us to usually get n log n average case time complexity. Now the Merge sort is going to be the first of the efficient sorts we look at. And with merge sort, we're going to cut the array in half, and we're going to sort each half separately. But then we're going to need to sort each half. That'll be the blue lines. And we're going to need to split one more so that 
each of our splits has only one element in it. So let's see if we can put these back together. First, we're going to combine these two elements and these two elements, and we want to put them in sorted order. So when we do that, three and four are out of order. So we put three and we put four. And here, one and seven are in order, so we have one and seven. Now, we're going to merge the blue splits. Oops, it looks like we forgot to merge this subarray, so let's do that. And that gives us two and six. So now, let's merge along the blue lines. So that's going to give us these two are in an array, these two are in an array, these two are in an array, and then in an array by itself, we have five, which is blue because that's the color it is. There's nothing special about the coloring there. So first, let's merge these two. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the smallest of each of the first two elements. So here, two is smaller than three. So we're going to take the two and put it in the merged array here. Then three is the smallest. So four is smaller than six, so we put four. And then six is all that's left, so we know that that goes here. For this array and this array to merge, one is smaller than five, five is smaller than seven, and then seven is all that's left, so we copy that down to the bottom. Now you notice we have now two sorted subarrays, but we never compared anything here with anything here. So we're reducing the number of comparisons we have to do. And finally, we're going to combine these last two arrays and we'll actually move our elements down so that you can see. So one is smaller than two, two is smaller than five, three is smaller than five, four is smaller than five, five is smaller than six, six is smaller than seven, and then seven is all that's left, so we carry that down. And that's our sorted final array. And you'll notice we could do this in place with some swaps, but that gets a little tricky. So in our algorithm, we'll actually create an array that we'll copy these into as we merge them together. With quick sort, very similar to what we did with merge sort, we're going to cut the array in half and sort each half. However, with quick sort, we're going to choose what we're going to call a pivot element, and we're going to pick the middle element. There's better ways to pick the element. And in fact, this first pivot, it's going to turn out to be a bad pivot. But what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everything less than two, our pivot, is going to be on the left side of the two. Everything greater is going to be on the right side. Now you might say, well, why don't we pick four? Because four would cut this array in half. Well, we don't know where that middle element will be, so we're going to do a best guess. Typically, if you just want to pick one, the mi middle element's best. An uh, even better way would be to say pick three random or the first, middle, last elements of the array, take the median of those elements, and that'll usually give you a better pivot. Choosing the pivot's important because you want to have your best chance to split the array basically in half. Now here, if we split this up, we're going to have one, we're going to have one, then we're going to have two. Now two's the pivot, so I'm going to put that in yellow, and then we're going to swap four and one. So we'll leave six here, we'll swap uh, three in the pivot as well, four, seven, and five. Now you might say they're not sorted. Well that's right, we're going to sort the subarrays. One thing that's nice is you'll notice we're already sorted here. Here we just have one element, which is trivially sorted. Here we have the pivot, and the pivot's going to wind up in its final place in the final array because everything to the left of the pivot will be smaller than the pivot value. Everything to the right will be larger. So now let's choose another pivot. We'll pick our middle element again, which will be four, and now we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to move everything to the left of four that's smaller than four, and move everything that's larger than four to the right of four. Six is greater than four. Seven and five are both greater than four. So what we'll do is we'll put three here. We'll put our pivot four, and then six, seven, and five. So we're choosing really bad pivots here, unfortunately, but sometimes you get unlucky. With a larger array randomly distributed, this won't happen quite so badly. I'm going to mark as red everything that's in its final place. This is in its final place because it's a subarray of one. This was a pivot. This is a subarray of one, so it's in its final place. And this is a pivot. So those are all in their final location. Now let's choose another pivot. So we'll choose seven. Six and five are both smaller than seven. And then seven, since it's a pivot, is going to be in its final place. Now we just have two more left. And one thing you can do to speed up quick sort, and in fact you'll do this in your project, is once your array is small enough, 
you can just sort the array. Here, if we have two elements, it's trivial to swap them if they're out of order. So we'll assume that our algorithm does that, and we'll swap these as 5 and 6, which puts them in their final order. And as you can see, we now have the array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.